Hey guys, what's up? So, in the last video we talked about VMC and we're going to kind of finish that up today by looking at some of the factors that affect VMC. So, VMC is not a set number. Um, it will change. Now, we are going to talk about what the red radial line on the airspeed indicator indicates uh, at, for VMC. But let's start by taking a look at this list. And the acronym that I like to use is SMACFM. Um, which stands for standard day, max power on the operating engine, max CG, critical engine and operative and windmilling, flaps to the takeoff position and gear up, up to five degrees of bank to the operative engine, and the most unfavorable weight within the takeoff range, um, which typically is going to be your lightest weight for calculating VMC, heaviest weight against performance. And that brings up a good point. There's really two things when we talk about these factors that we're discussing. The first would be the performance of the aircraft, and so anytime we're discussing performance, we're really talking about the aircraft's ability to climb. Um, sometimes, even at the best single engine rate of climb, VYSE, we may not even have a positive rate, uh, depending on how poor our performance is. So the other thing it talks about is controllability. Um, these factors will directly relate to the effectiveness of the rudder to offset that asymmetrical thrust of the single operative engine on a multi-engine aircraft. And that is going to be, in essence, what affects minimum control speed when we lose rudder authority. If we look at these, there's really four categories that we can divvy these up into. So the first is going to be things that increase the power produced on the engine. The next would be the things that cause the rudder to be more or less effective or things that help the rudder to be more effective. Then you have items that are drag related, such as flaps, gear, and then your windmilling propeller, as well as the momentum's effect, which is basically the weight of the aircraft and how much it wants to stay traveling in the direction that it is. So let's talk about these four types of categories or these four types of factors that affect both performance and uh, controllability. And when we talk about it, let's talk about the testing that we do when manufacturers certify an aircraft. So when Piper or Cessna or uh, Beach, when anybody tests an aircraft, when they set it up for the certification to get a new uh, airworthiness certificate for the aircraft, they are required by FAA Part 23-149 to test a certain configuration for the aircraft um, at VMC. And if you look at this list, you can see that the majority of these items are takeoff power related. So really, when they set that red radial line on the airspeed indicator and when they are doing the calculations, the most critical phase of flight is going to be takeoff. And we'll see why here in just a second. But at takeoff, if we have that set number, hopefully in all of the phases of flight, minimum control speed will be lower uh, than what it would be at takeoff on takeoff power. So let's look at the first um, category, which is going to be thrust performance on minimum control speed. So there's two things that affects thrust performance. The first thing would be the standard day. So when we say standard day, the engine uh, minimum control speed is calculated at sea level pressure on a standard day. So when you have cooler air uh, or more dense air, you have more molecules closer together, then the propeller is more efficient, the engine is more efficient. Um, and you have better performance. Then the second item is literally just what the power setting is on the aircraft. If you have uh, higher power in on the aircraft um, power levers than you know crews or something, you're going to have more thrust being produced on that engine. And when you have a single engine operating, then the more thrust that engine is producing, the quicker you're going to run out of rudder authority on the back side of the aircraft. So having a cooler lower altitude being at sea level versus 5,000 feet is going to make the aircraft performance better but that in turn is going to mean that we have less controllability. These two factors though we typically won't sacrifice. Um, we will try to maintain the maximum power on that inoperative engine even if it does mean we're going to lose a little performance because we do need to try to climb away from the ground come back around and land. But what about the rudder? Well, the center of gravity really uh, is the one thing that affects the, the rudder's ability um, outside of the airflow and across it. But the one thing on the smack fin list that affects it 
and the location of the center of gravity really helps the rudder's arm, how effective it is. The longer a distance the rudder has between it and the center of gravity, the more force the air flowing across the rudder can generate to offset that thrust produced by the engine. So having a forward center of gravity is much more stable, much more controllable. But it is going to result in less performance of the aircraft. Now why is this? Well, if we think about the aircraft as having a center of gravity pulling down, behind it it will have a center of lift lifting up. And to offset this motion, to keep it from like tilting forwards, there will have to be a downward portion of lift or a downward force on the tail to kind of balance the equation. But as we, if I try to, try to do it like this, as we bring the center of gravity back closer to the center of lift, as it comes aft, now that tail portion can get smaller and smaller until it's completely diminished. Um, the other thing that can help is the banking into the operative engine. And we talked about that a little bit in the first video, how that two to three degrees of bank generally corresponds to the correct amount of deflection. And the reason for that is the drag um, on the side of the aircraft, the rudder authority is better, and the engine has better performance because there's more air flowing directly across the engine. So those three things increase both the performance as well as the controllability of the aircraft. If we were to continue to bank towards the operative engine, um, you would further decrease minimum control speed because of the horizontal component of lift, pulling it towards um, the operative engine. But the FAA limits how much you can bank towards that operating engine to 5 degrees, so that way manu manufacturers don't use uh, maybe 15, 20 degrees and really lower minimum control speed, that's going to come with a drastic decrease in performance. So that's why the FAA limits that to 5 degrees. Now, if we think about it, what would happen if we were to bank into the inoperative engine? Well, that very thing happened. Uh, in 2011 uh, with a Queen Air in the Philippines and the Queen Air is a just a piston engine version of a King Air if you've never seen it before you can look up the Beach Queen Air and it is a I think it's a GSIO so a geared uh, a GTSIO it's a geared turbo supercharged fuel injected engine that is eight cylinders uh, the 720 is the it's a Lycoming GTSIO 720 um, and one of the engines on this aircraft failed and you'll see in the video it's the left engine that has failed and you'll make just make a, a note of which direction the pilot banked towards. So let's take a look at this video and then we're going to talk about the, the VMC roll that occurred um, and what could have prevented it. So in that video, it's pretty gruesome. We saw that the uh, aircraft you know, banks to the left and the aircraft snaps into a VMC roll, goes inverted and crashes there. But if we think about it, the pilot had control of the aircraft. He was flying just fine. Yes, it was a power failure, probably just a partial power failure. But the pilot did have control of the aircraft. So what could have been done to save this aircraft? What could the pilot have done? Well, when he banked towards the inoperative engine, you can see that rudder is now way up in the air, it's way sideways, and uh, the rudder force is not only acting kind of against the asymmetrical thrust, but now it's also acting in the direction of lift. So as you bank towards the inoperative engine, you actually are going to increase minimum control speed, and what we just watched was a stall spin into the ground, a VMC roll, because the pilot banked towards his inoperative engine really caused the minimum control speed to increase to the airspeed he was operating at. So if you were to ever encounter a failure of an engine in a multi-engine aircraft, always make a mental note to just make turns in the direction of the operable engine. Um, and when we turn to like come back around to the airport, uh, you know, if the left engine's failed, let's always turn towards the right engine. What about drag? What's drag's effect on VMC? Well, there's two real things, and the first is the propeller. So if we leave the propeller windmilling, and by windmilling we just mean that it's setting up straight, it's a fan more or less at that point, 
um, the air hitting it is going to be pushing the aircraft back. Like in our illustration here, the left side of the aircraft is creating drag because it's not, no longer creating thrust. So we've lost that engine. Well, if we were to feather that propeller, then it would minimize the drag. The propeller would be stationary. There would only be like skin friction drag. It's the only thing that would be really causing the aircraft to have any drag on it. And that's going to increase both the controllability of the aircraft to have it feathered as well as increase the performance by reducing the drag causing us to um, not climb as fast. This one is really critical. Um, most manufacturers immediately want you to secure the propeller into the feather position um, if you have a chance of having a positive rate of climb. And the second thing is the flaps to the takeoff and gear up. And the reason for this is the manufacturer is trying to simulate a VMC um, situation right after takeoff, like you've got an out of ground effect and now you are still got your flaps in but you don't have gear. Um, and as you uh, put the flaps and gear up, you are losing a little bit of stability because of the drag that the flaps generate to offset the thrust of the operative engine and the keel effect that the landing gear gives to help the aircraft to track straight. Both of these will increase stability but they do so at a significant cost of performance. And if you think back to the King Air accident we saw last time, uh, that pilot did not put the gear up, nor did he feather the propeller, actually. And both of those things caused such a loss of performance that he inadvertently trying to pitch up, slowed down to minimum control speed before he rolled into that hangar. So the last thing we have to talk about is momentum. And momentum's effect on an aircraft really has to do with the weight of the aircraft itself. If we've got a 4,000 pound aircraft, and we've also got a 2,000 pound aircraft, both of them exact same plane, just one of them's got maximum takeoff weight and the other one has a lighter weight, much lighter weight. The 4,000 pound aircraft, if it's got a thousand foot pounds of force being exerted on its operable engine, is not going to want to yaw as much as the 2,000 pound aircraft with the exact same amount of force on the engine. So you have less performance because you have to now offset 4,000 pounds worth of weight with that one engine rather than 2,000 pounds worth of weight. But that less performance does come with better controllability because the aircraft, not just the rudder, but the aircraft's inertia, its momentum wants to keep it going straight. When we talk about these, we're really trying to understand the minimum control speed from a manufacturer uh, perspective from how they are trying to protect the pilots by setting this single speed. So we should recognize that aircraft are tested in anticipation of providing a minimum control speed that is realistic as possible at a takeoff configuration and scenario. But just like stall speed, VMC or minimum control speed is variable. Even though it has a set number such as 80 knots for the Aztec, it will possibly change. So you have to always keep that in mind and you really need to be very cognizant and understanding of the factors that are going to cause it to change. Um, and then the last thing is a balance of the performance of the thrust generated by the aircraft and the control or the rudder's ability to offset that thrust will be needed to balance and maintain control of the aircraft depending on what phase of flight you're currently in. So on landing, it's going to be less important to have a lot of thrust in because you're hopefully descending into the airport getting ready to land and with less thrust on the engine, you're probably going to be a, a lot safer, um, a much lower VMC speed. Whereas on takeoff, you really need to maximize all the performance you can get and just do the best you can with controllability, make sure you stay at a safe airspeed, BYSE, so that way you don't lose control of the aircraft. So hopefully you've learned a lot from uh, this lesson. This is just something I wanted to come on. I had to prepare this for something I hope to get on and uh, explain to the channel here in a few weeks. But um, hopefully you've enjoyed it. Hopefully you've learned something about multi-engine aircraft. I'm thinking in the next few weeks we may back up and go to some really basic concepts like uh, aerodynamics, um, basic aerodynamics uh, for all aircraft just to make sure that we have a good base understanding of that before we do anything uh, more complicated like minimum control speed. So I appreciate you watching. Hope you have a great rest of your day. We'll see you next time. Have a good one.